welcome to the historic Cathedral of Assumption. It is an auspicious day as we are gathered together in this beautiful house of God on the Christian feast day of Epiphany. In 2010, at his first inauguration, Mayor Fisher called us together as one city, one community, one family. Today we gather in the same spirit, inspired, informed, and strengthened by the diversity of our great city as we, people of different faith, come together to celebrate one shining Louisville. In these trying times, we Louisvillians are blessed to have a leader who himself is a mortal, but his ideals and beliefs are immortal. He not only promotes compassion and diversity across our city, country, and world, but also believes in these divine principles from the depth of his heart, which is truly reflected in his daily dealings, both as a public servant and also as a fellow human being. With great respect and humility, now I present to you 50th Mayor of Louisville, Mayor Gregory E. Fisher. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you all for coming. Today is a celebration of the people of Louisville and the culture that we're creating together, a culture that uh, embraces the healing, connective power of art and music and creativity and a compassionate community, proudly made up of people of different faiths, backgrounds, and nationalities. We call this celebration One Shining Louisville in honor of one of my heroes, Thomas Merton, the Trappist monk who stood just about two blocks from here in 1958, my birth year, and he had a realization that all the people around him there on 4th Street and all the people everywhere were one. This concept means so much to me that I quoted Merton in my first inaugural speech eight years ago. Of all the people elected to the office in 2010, I don't know how many others quoted Thomas Merton, to be honest with you, in their inauguration, but I think a lot more should have. <laughs> in his diary of the strangers that he saw that day in Louisville, he wrote, they were mine and I was theirs and they were all walking around, shining like the sun. That description beautifully renders the interdependence and love that help form our city value of compassion, a value that is common to all of the world's major religions, and a value, frankly, that some questioned me for embracing as being too soft when I came into office, but I knew that the soft skills are often tougher than hard concepts like transportation or building, and that I would have a lot of allies who would join me in working to create an even more compassionate city, like the great Dr. Mohammed Babur that we just heard from, and I so appreciate as a dear friend. And so many of you all have been on that mission as well. And I knew that the people of our hometown of Louisville would respond in a big way, and they have. We've launched the Compassionate Schools Project, the first of its kind in the country, a national model. We have another national model in our given day, week of service, that was inspired by my mom, who I'm so proud could be with me here today, along with my dad, George. And these models have grown every year. We've had 45 cities 
from all over the world come to Louisville to benchmark us to understand what we're trying to do around this human value of compassion. I think it speaks to what the world is looking for right now. We've been recognized year after year as an international model city of compassion. We've achieved perfect scores on the human rights campaign, and we formed a strategic partnership with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, all cementing our reputation and our drive, our never-ending drive. We are not perfect, but we are trying to be an even more compassionate city every day, where everyone's full human potential can flourish and, as Merton said, shine like the sun. So we wanted to celebrate all of that here this afternoon. And because everybody loves music, we wanted to invite some of our many wonderful local world-class performers to join us here today. I'm so proud, too, of our music scene that has grown in national prominence in these last few years with so many great festivals and venues giving our wonderful artists such a wonderful chance to enrich our lives each and every day. So I want to say a big thank you to all of our musicians, all of our performers, all of the speakers that we have here today, dear friends representing different parts of our city, for helping what I hope today we're trying to create a love song to our city, or a series of love songs about our cities. And like you, I love my hometown. And I'm so honored to have the chance to serve our great, wonderful, and unique, diverse, global city. Here we are, eight years into our city journey of compassion, and I feel like, in many ways, we're just getting started. So thank you all for coming. Enjoy the performance, and have a great afternoon. God bless you all.
God is a friend to the poor orphan child. in Louisville, at the corner of 4th and Walnut, in the center of shopping district. I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all those people. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Ashhad an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhad an la أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله They were mine and our theirs, that we could not be alien to one another, even though we were total strangers. I'd like to offer a blessing from the Jewish tradition. It's a blessing for peace that Jews recite all around the world every morning. I was singing it in Hebrew, but the translation is, may God grant peace upon us, peace and happiness 
goodness and blessing, mercy and compassion upon us, upon all the people Israel, and upon all who dwell on earth. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of spurious self-isolation in a special world, the world of renunciation and supposed holiness. The whole illusion of separate holy existence is a dream. Though, out of the world, we are in the same world as everybody else. The world of the bomb, the world of race hatred, the world of technology, the world of mass media, big business, revolution, and all the rest. We take a different attitude to all of these things, for we belong to God. Yet, so does everybody else belong to God. We just happen to be conscious of it and to make a profession out of the consciousness. But does that entitle us to consider ourselves different or even better than others? The whole idea is preposterous.
still you. Let me inspire you. I know when you come from nothing, that's what you aspire to. But beat the odds. The streets are hard. And these I see through bars, so you don't have to see through bars. I went from L.L. Bean backpacks to L.L.C. tax bracks. It's not impossible to get past 21 blackjack. To me, my hand was dealt and the game was over. I changed my cards and flipped the table over. And when I return, that's something that you earn. Working hard to put that curse to me. Never been in gangs or hope for my university. But the college life for everyone, they try to kick me all up out of mind. Uptight, insecure, jealous people tried me all the time. And I really thought about dropping out and going back to the porch with bruh. And then I challenged everybody's doubts. Now I'm rapping over orchestras. <laughs> but they might never embrace your culture. But no matter what, they can never take your culture. So in the words of my favorite rapper, Hova, you try to teach people how to be kings, but they want to be soldiers. So I told my son, you the king, grow the castle and make a better heir. Never be indifferent to the kingdom. If it's dead, then you better care. So my son's life, upstanding, unbridled, upright, so bright, he will shine forever. Look at my sunlight. The sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. And I suppose my happiness could have taken, taken form in the words, thank God, thank God that I am like other men, that I am only a man among others. To think that for 16 or 17 years, I have been taking seriously the pure illusion that is implicit in so much of our monastic thinking. It is a glorious destiny to be a member of the human race. Though it is a race dedicated to many absurdities and one which makes many terrible mistakes, yet with all that, God himself glorified in becoming a member of the human race a member of the human race. To think that such a commonplace realization should suddenly seem like news, that one holding the winning ticket in a cosmic sweepstakes.
the immense joy of being man, a member of a race in which God himself became incarnate. As if the sorrows and stupidities of the human condition could overwhelm me, now I realize what we all are. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There's no way of telling people that they are all walking around, shining like the sun. What I have may not be much In the eyes of someone else It may be limited by human frailty And no, it cannot compare To the gifts with me you share It may not be much but I give it back to you. No greater riches 
from the east, nor gold from the west. On a scale he may not measure with the best, and no, it's not mine to keep. Lord, I place it at your feet. It may not be much, but I give. And walk in your way, Lord, I give you my mind so you can instruct me how to pray. I give you my heart so you can fill it with your love. not be much but that that it is I give it back to you no glory in my name no wealth do I claim for who I am it's all because of you cannot compare Lord to the gifts with me you share it may not be much but I give it back to you I give you my feet so I can walk in your way Lord I give you my mind so you can instruct me how to pray. I give you my heart so you can fill it with your love. Today I give my soul to shine for you above. I give you all that I have. So it may not be much. Hallelujah. It may not be much. Thank you, Jesus. It may not be much, but I give it back to you. This changes nothing in the sense of my value of my solitude, for it is in fact the function of solitude to make one realize such things with a clarity that would be impossible to anyone completely immersed in the other cares, the other illusions, the automisms of a tightly collective existence. My solitude, however, is not my own, for I see now how much bigger it belongs to them, and that I have a responsibility for it in their regard not just in my own. It is because I am one with them that I owe it to them to be alone. And when I'm alone, they are not. They but my own self. There are no strangers.
as if I suddenly saw the secret beauty of their hearts. The depths of their hearts were neither sin, nor desire, nor self-knowledge can reach. The core of their beauty, the core of their reality, the person that each one is in God's eyes. If only they could all see themselves as they really are. If only we could see each other that way all the time. There would be no war, no more hatred, no more cruelty, no more greed. I suppose the big problem would be that we would fall down and worship each other. But this cannot be seen, only believed, and understood by a peculiar gift. Mm-hmm. 
bitch. Again, that expression, la pointe vierge, comes in here. At the center of our being is a point of nothingness. Nothingness which is untouched by sin and by illusion. A point of pure truth, a point or spark which belongs entirely to God, which is never at our disposal, from which God disposes of our lives which is inaccessible to fantasies of our own mind, our brutalities of our own will. This little point of nothingness and of absolute poverty is the pure glory of God in us. It is so to speak his name written in us as our poverty, as our indigence, as our dependence, as our sonship. It is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. It is in everybody, and if we could see it, we would see these billions of points of light coming together in a face and blaze of sun. That would make all the darkness and cruelty of life vanish completely. I have no program for seeing this. It is only given, but the gate of heaven is everywhere. A sound of hope, a sound of peace, a sound that celebrates and speaks what we believe, a sound of love, a sound so strong, it's amazing what is given when we share a
Thank you for your presence here today and every day. We would like to thank Maggie Cyphers and Father Michael Wimsett for hosting us in this historic cathedral. Special thanks to our own Ben Saleh, Sarah Harris, Halida Haddock of Center for Interfaith Relations, and Margaret Brosco for putting together this beautiful program. At the conclusion of our program, we invite you to join us in the undercraft of the cathedral for a reception with light refreshments. Before we conclude our celebration today, let us take a moment to lift up our intentions for ourselves, our neighbors, our community, our planet. Let us bless our hopes and dreams for the health and well-being of one shining Louisville. Let us commit to be in relationship with one another, to celebrate our diversity and cherish our shared humanity. Let us sing together. Let us dance together. Let us pray together. Let us bond together. Let us live together. May we build compassionate hearts and minds as a community together. Civic leaders, religious groups, educational groups, and everyone. And this is intention of a granny that for next five years, she will help guide her grandchildren. And this 10-year-old Louisvillian says, my intention is for Louisville is to see more land. I dislike all the pollution. I want to see more parks for dogs or just parks in general. And this young person says, that my hope for Louisville over the next four years is that more residents heed the call for us to be a compassionate city, that we together bring our diverse ideas and talents to tackle issues of poverty, homelessness, and food insecurity. And this last intention breaks my heart that may our love and compassion be colorblind. May our love and compassion be colorblind.
it matters to me. Took a long time to get here. But if it would have been easy, would have cared. Oh, yeah. Like a tropical forest, like a cop on a beach, when all is in order, you'll get lost in the heat, oh yeah, I feel so wonderful, wonderful. So oh. 